So many of our patients are presbyopic, but are we offering them the best solutions? Hi, I'm Dr. Jesslyn Quint, and I'm here to demystify the landscape of presbyopia. We're gonna talk about the latest developments in presbyopia, the clinical trials, what we can help kind of set for patient expectations so that our patients are well-informed to help pick the best tools they need to treat their presbyopia. In the world of presbyopia, it's a condition that's impacting so many of our patients. Statistically, we see numbers of 128 million Americans have presbyopia. That's a huge number. So as a clinician, I interpret that as though it's hard to relate to, presbyopia is here to stay. And so just like with anything, I wanna be able to give options for my patients that, that meets them where they are, that complements their lifestyle, their visual needs, that allows them to have the freedom and flexibility of being able to be comfortable, but see well, even if they are presbyopia. So, so many of our presbyopic patients are looking for a solution to help them see up close that isn't in the form of glasses or contact lenses, whether that's because of comfort issues or just, you know, how they, how active they are, their lifestyle kind of hobbies impacts. And so they're, they're looking for different solutions. And so we have a surgical option, which is a more permanent solution, which could be very advantageous for some patients. But some patients might not want kind of a kind of very serious surgical option and they want something that's possibly a little bit more temporary. That's where presbyopia drops really kind of fit in. So it still offers a solution for our patients to have improved near vision without necessarily having this kind of permanent locked in kind of surgical outcome. So although we only have one commercially available option right now at the time that we're filming this, there's two really exciting drops in the pipeline. One of those is a different type of pilocarpine, 0.4% pilocarpine. It was FDA approved in Q4 of 2023 and will hopefully soon be available commercially at the beginning of 2025. Um, hopefully at the end of 25, another new drop that's not pilocarpine, um, acyclidine, will hopefully soon be available. So innovation is awesome. Innovation allows us to be offer new tools and different treatment plans for our presbyopic patients. Both pilocarpine and acyclidine are muscarinic agonists, but they're differently selective. So for pilocarpine drops, whether it's something like a 1.25% or 0.4%, both of those impact both the iris sphincter and the ciliary muscle. So in doing so, it causes meiosis by activating the iris sphincter, which extends the depth of focus because it also acts on that ciliary muscle. We see a little bit of an increase in amplitude of accommodation, which depending on who we're using this for patient-wise, that could be advantageous. Um, ultimately, that causes a little bit of a myopic shift, but at the same time, if it's not the right candidate, it could cause a little bit more um, distance vision blur, which might not be exactly what our patients are looking for. So pros and cons to everything. Um, acyclidine, because it is very selective for certain muscarinic receptors in the iris sphincter, it doesn't impact that ciliary muscle. So we still get the kind of um, pinhole effect by allowing that iris sphincter to close, um, which does extend the depth of focus, but we don't get this myopic shift with this, with this medication. So we've got some exciting clinical trials to back up um, these new innovations of presbyopia. So if we look at CLOSI, which is 0.4% pilocarpine, so this, it was FDA approved, so it went through two different phase three clinical trials, NEAR1 and NEAR2 
totaling, they um, tested about over 600 participants. And in order to kind of meet their endpoint, they had to show that the 0.4% pilocarpine had uh, three lines of improvement um, in distance corrected near visual acuity without losing more than two lines of distance visual acuity in kind of mesopic or low lighting conditions. So that study was over a two week period. It did meet its primary endpoint at day eight. Um, adverse events, similar to what we've seen with other pilocarpine drops for presbyopia, a little, it's a drop, so it's going to burn, sting, possibly cause a little bit of a dimming impact. It is pilocarpine because it impacts the ciliary muscle, so we also just need to be mindful about the retinal tear and retinal detachment possibility. Factors that should be considered when putting a patient on presbyopia drops is really how motivated they are. So at the end of the day, I feel like every presbyopic patient deserves to hear about all their options, whether it's in the form of glasses, contacts, surgical, or presbyopia drops you know, starting there and then really asking what their goals are, how they want to use this, what their refractive error is, what your starting point is versus what your what your kind of goal, your end point is. Um, when I think about my patients that have had good success with presbyopia drops, they were motivated, of course, but also we, we chase this endpoint of functional vision. So if we look at the clinical trials, it talks about a three line improvement and most of that's centered around this kind of 2040 mark for up close. And so whenever I prescribe any medication, I really wanna set a realistic patient expectation, not only what they can expect kind of adverse event wise, but also what they could possibly expect near vision wise. And so we're really looking for patients to be able to be functional. And so for the patients that I go back and I, in hindsight, look at the ones that we have really great success with, it starts with just taking the time to set that very clear patient expectation. Nobody likes surprises. Everybody kind of likes to know what they're getting into. So taking that extra 30 seconds to just explain what they can ex impact and expect is really helpful. Disease severity does come into account because it, it really kind of impacts who, which patient candidate is, is going to be best for what sort of kind of treatment modality. So the beauty of the, the newest innovations in presbyopia drops is that they're both preservative free. Um, currently 1.25% pilocarpine has BAK in it. And so for our patients that might already be a little bit more dry eye prone and especially installing a drop if they're going to be using it on a daily basis, we really want to be mindful of the ocular surface. So when I think about severity of disease state, even with kind of these coexisting factors, it's definitely kind of impacting what options I'm going to take. As far as severity of like presbyopia, whether somebody's mild or a moderate or mere, a severe presbyopia, we really have to look at just what drop we're, we're kind of taking into account. If we look at the clinical trials for acyclidine, so their current phase three clinical trial clarity um, had a wider range and age range of the participants that were in it. So 45 to 75, and it included um, different parameters, even pseudofake. So when I look at clinical trial and using evidence-based evidence medicine to apply it to my daily patients, I'm looking at that part of it and for my more severe patients or patients who are you know, pseudophagic that are gonna have a lot more of an ad power that might make me reach for one presbyopia drop more, more than another one. But for my patients who are a little bit more mild to moderate, clinical trials near one and near two also show you know, some, some statistically um, significant improvement in near vision. So it really just depends on what the patient's goals are, how long they want the drop to last for, because both of these presbyopia drop options um, kick in a little bit differently. One category kicks in according to the data within 30 minutes, another is upwards of um, an hour. One of uh, the drops is once a day dosing, the other one's twice a day dosing. So again, depending on just what our patient's goals are, like if patients wanting to use this all day, if they're just wanting this for being able to read a map whenever they're hiking for a couple of hours, all of that's really going to impact what specific presbyopia drop I'm going to recommend.
There's also different costs associated, pros and cons to both, um, with presbyopia drops, even if they last upwards, you know, to the majority of the day, 10 hours, they're, they're not a permanent fix. And so while that could be a real advantage, the cost part of that is that every day, every month, you know, they're having to, to put in a new drop. And so obviously there's a cost associated. So if somebody's looking for a more permanent fix to not have to pay that, that monthly fee essentially to have the presbyopia drops, then a surgical outcome might be best for them. But for some patients that also might not qualify or have funds to kind of take the surgical step, then having something that is possibly a little bit cheaper on a month to month basis is a good option for other patients. This is a prescription medication. And so with anything, doing a really thorough health assessment is, is always helpful. And also being mindful of what possible adverse events our patients could encounter. So with pilocarpine, whether it's in a lower concentration or a higher concentration, it has been reported with retinal tears and retinal detachments. So that just means that I need to make sure that I'm doing a really thorough ocular assessment before I'm kind of recommending it for patients. For my patients who might have a lot of dry eye or their ocular surface um, might not be in the best state. I might need to kind of address that issue first before we move into treating the presbyopia. As far as safety, I think it's really important that we just, again, be really aware of what the clinical trial showed and make sure that we are conveying those adverse events to our patients and also screening our patients to make sure that the right candidates are being recommended the, the right drop that's gonna work for them. So as a whole, this is a drop, it's going in the eyes, it's gonna cause a little bit of burning and irritation. We're making the pupil smaller, so we're probably gonna have a little bit of a dimming effect. Although most of those were pretty transient, they were considered mild, they went away within a couple of of weeks. I have so many patients that have benefited from presbyopia drops. Of course, it starts with making sure that they're the right candidates for this drop, but a couple that initially come to mind. So I have a, a guy in my practice who is a big golfer who um, has had cataract surgery and doesn't really need distance vision correction puts on readers kind of on a PRN basis, but when he's golfing, he's really annoyed to have to pull out a pair of reading glasses. And he's not really open to doing a progressive or doing like a multifocal contact lens, and he's already had cataract surgery, so that kind of takes the surgical option off the table. But he really loves his presbyopia drops because he can put the drops in, go about his golf game, be able to you know record a score on the, on the scorecard, and, and it's a win-win. So that's one patient. I have another, or a handful of patients too, who really fall into that look good, feel good kind of category to where they are just not interested in anything that's gonna make them be perceived as a little bit older. And so being able to have a drop that kicks in really quickly, that gets them through you know, the activity that they need to see up close is a win-win. The beauty of presbyopia drops is that they can be used on a PRN basis. So whether the patient wants to use it for a girl's night, a date night, uh, a round of golf, right? So being able to, to pop this in for just that one activity opens a lot of doors for patients. They're not kind of permanently locked into having to use this every day if they don't want to. But these drops are also FDA approved and also safe to use on a daily basis for that other segments of patients who are looking for some improvement in near vision and the form of a presbyopia drop, but to use it on a daily basis.